So um, one of the themes that I always really love talking about on this podcast is the, the theme of, of second acts. And I think any athlete that um, performs on an elite level is acutely aware that the clock is ticking and then they're not going to be able to do this forever. So, I mean, you launched Kasia Surf a couple of years ago. Was that part of your plan all along or how did, how did that develop? Like, is that something that you always kind of had in mind as something that was on the horizon? You know, it's so interesting. Um, not really. I mean, people would always be like, oh, you should do your own company. And I was designing a lot for Roxy. I was even helping them with their ads. I was shooting some of their ad campaigns toward the end of my my you know, run with them. And I was just like, you know, a part of so many of the aspects of what it takes to create a brand that it just kind of came time. And, and to be honest, I was just like, felt like I got to a place where I couldn't go anymore. And they were like, Hey, let's, you know, do another contract. And I was like, but they were going through some internal changes and they were kind of keeping any of the athletes from doing their own companies and, or like doing their own like capsule collections. They were yeah. like, oh, we're not doing that anymore. I'm like, Why do you think that was? I don't really know. They had like a changing of the guard. They got like a new president. I never even met the guy, to be honest. Right when he came in, I was on my way out. Um, and that's when I was just like, you know what? Like, I love surfing and I'm always going to be a surfer. And, and really, you know, I, I feel like what's inspiring me and what's keeping me going and what's pushing me and is a growing edge for me is actually like designing stuff. Well, with your company, it. are you are you more involved on the design side than the, the business side or are they equal or do you, is there one if you had an opportunity to only do one? I mean, do you enjoy the business side of it or would you prefer just to? No, I mean, yeah. I do everything from shipping orders to answer the phone calls for customer service yeah. to design everything to like everything, you know, so to be honest, like I do everything and it's a lot because I don't get as much time to surf and I love the creative aspect of it and I would love to bring in people to run the business part of it so I could just be creative and we could actually like inflate the company, but I'm kind of like do all of it and it's, yeah. it's exhausting and I am grateful for the opportunity and it's really, you know, some people go to business school. I like created a business and I've been in school with it, you know, has were there any lessons that you learned from surfing that have helped inform how you run your company or a, or any lessons you learned from surfing that help inform how you run a female owned company? Absolutely. You know, I mean, I think it's just like following your instincts, um, is huge. Having like resilience, like paddling back out after you get beat back to shore <laughs> is huge. Yeah. You know, after you like really eat it, getting back up and having another run. You know, and, and just like the creativity, you know, surfing, you don't really know where you're going. You just take off on a wave and you just kind of flow with it. With running a business, it's the same thing. I'm just like going with something that I feel and I don't really know where I'm going. I'm just like flowing with it. And some people are like looking at bottom lines and doing all this stuff. Like that's not how I do it. I kind yeah. of like have created this company like I surf. I'm like, I really love that. I'm going to do this. And I've been grateful to do collaborations with other amazing brands and, you know, to be able to grow and evolve. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm constantly learning what I could have done better or I should have done differently. And I think it's awesome. You yeah. Know? So, I mean, so you, also, yeah. you, oh, so you can, so you can almost make the, make the analogy that like, you know, the market force of the company is like, it's riding a wave. I and mean, when you take off on a wave, you're not really sure what's going to happen, where it's going to lead, how the ride's going to go. And I mean, that, you think that's kind of helped you in your perspective of being able to let go in business and not be as, you know, regimented of what you're trying to achieve for the next quarter or whatever. Yeah. Like, like I don't even, I don't think I've ever thought about quarters. I'm like, I'm going to make a collection and sell yeah. it and I'm going to do this and sell it. And I, I really kind of speak from my heart about everything that we talk about, you know, and really try to empower people and inspire other women because the ocean and surfing has empowered and inspired me. Like I didn't know what I was going to do when I was a little kid. I didn't think I was ever going to be a pro surfer. I just started doing something, you know, fanatically because I loved it. And that's kind of like when I chose to leave Roxy and start my own company, everybody told me I was crazy. Just kind of like all my friends at school are like, you're never going to be a surfer, whatever, you're crazy. And I'm like, cool, I'm going to graduate high school and buy a car and go like travel around Australia and live in it for a while. So you, and, you straight up walked away from a, from a contract re-up to, to do this venture? Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. And yeah, it was, um, it was interesting. It was an interesting choice, you know, um, 
And, um, and yeah, my parents, my manager at the time, everybody was like, dude, really? And I'm like, whatever. Like I've done that for 15 years. I know yeah. that I, it's not going to go anywhere new or different or inspiring. And the new people were coming in and like, I really felt like, um, uh, a lot of the energy, a lot of the people that I loved working with that were really kind of like pillars um, in the company were really all starting to leave and like go other places. And it just, the energy was gone, you and know? How, what, have, what have been some of the biggest obstacles you've had to overcome being like a female business owner in that space? Is that, is that an issue? Have you come into any um, obstacles or conflicts that I mean, I think just being like a business owner is intense, you period. know, and yeah. period, you know, I think that sometimes there like is a little bit. And I think that that shifting or like sometimes even with like investment money and stuff like that, like a lot of kind of like, you know, um, like anything, you know, sometimes with like starting a company, there can be a little bit of a boys club like, oh, like my bro's doing this. Let's all invest, you know, where there's not really that same pool of money for, for the women as much. And they're starting to be more and more in that. So I just did it solely on my own, you know, like funded it myself, did everything myself, figured it out, called all the factories, like, like figured it out and still figuring it out every day. So it's been a really cool opportunity and lesson in life. And I'm, I'm grateful I did it. You know, it definitely taught me so much and continues to. Oh, I bet. And what's what's 2.0 for the company? Are you do you have any big plans to move forward in terms of are you trying to branch outside of of just apparel or or, or wetsuits, make it a larger brand? Or are you, you kind of happy just? It seems like there's this notion in business that you always have to be growing. Or it's like, can't you just have something that's successful and be happy with that? I mean, what's your perspective on that? Yeah, I really think that, you know, for me, it's not about growing and it's definitely not about growing by the standards that traditionally things would grow by, because I think that those standards are what created to the demise of the world. <laughs> that yeah. said, um, you know, so I think it's really just like sitting and pausing and listening and being like available for what's to come. And I think right now I'm kind of like pausing and watching and I chose not to make another collection. I've been working towards like collaborations with other brands to learn and to open up in different ways from that space. Um, and I'm in the process of kind of inviting in some new energy to see if we could start to expand and open into different avenues that would be really conscious and mindful and supportive of um both the business itself and also supportive of the earth and the world inspiring yeah. and yeah. and the world so it's like i just don't want to make things the world doesn't need any more stuff so trying to like yeah. make a business grow yeah. at the expense of like our earth is nothing i care about you yeah know? it's just it seems it's so strange that the notion in the business world that you could have like a successful profitable company but if you're not growing that's it's, it's a failure. Like that's not enough, you know, to, to be profitable and successful and maybe even like socially conscious or whatever, you know, but it has to always have this sense of, of, of growth. And I think, yeah, you're right. I think that speaks to a lot of the problems that we're having in the world right now. Totally. So I'm just learning and, and seeing where it goes. And, and like I said, inviting in new energy and kind of like, I think that, you know, there's a lot of transformation that's available. And I think that some of the reasons that I started it in the first place were to be more mindful and to focus on solutions rather than creating more issues. And I think that now people are like really ready to speak that language where before maybe sometimes people would be like, well, like, but what's the bottom line though? Yeah. You know? And I'm like, well, I'm not thinking about that at all, actually. Like I'm trying to just, you know, do this. And so now there's more space for like a conversation and the type of conversation I want to have. So it's awesome. And I, I really, you know, pay attention to brands like Patagonia who've been doing it that way since the beginning, Yeah, you know, and really just kind of stuck to their guns. And like, that's what I want to do. It's like, I also think there's enough time that I've like had the company going on my own and really like, you know, it's been my voice that now it's really kind of built off of that. And if I am to bring in other people, it's not going to dilute the reason that I started it in the first place. There's a Where pretty I, solid inertia of a mission statement that's in place that you can just bring some new blood and it won't kind of change the course of what you set out to do. That's the thing. That's the thing. We have enough of a groove, you know, we've dug enough of a groove and like also people have like their ears and, and minds and hearts more open to um, what else is possible. And I think it's constantly figuring it out every day, to be honest. So cool. Well, I'm, I'm a 
big fan. I love what you do. Thanks so much, man. Uh, 